Hello and welcome back once again. I hope you all had a good holiday period, but for me it was a little bit of work. Ow. Ow. I have so far spent quite a lot of time gathering resources, mostly stones, because I was running out of particularly andesite. It is night again. But I spent some time gathering some andesite, so I've got plenty of that. I got some more granite. I had enough diorite for what I ever want to use it for. What else did I get? I think I did get some more cobble, so the cobble box is now full. And I've got a cobble overflow. I know I got a load of spruce. What else did I get? I got spruce and spruce leaves. I'm sure I got another stone. This is my overflow of spruce. I could have sworn I got something else. What else did I get? I must just be thinking of the granite that I got. Oh well, I got some stuff. Hello. Somebody's all ready and dressed up in armour. Now as you can see, I don't have that much string. So one of the jobs that I have done is I went across to my amethyst farm, which is there. I put a bubble elevator in here because I was fed up of wasting rockets trying to fly out of here. And then just off to the side, just here, there was a cave spider spawner. So I've blocked that in and I've turned it into a little system to get a frankly terrifying amount of spider related goods, which isn't something I ever thought I'd want, but here we are. Got a lot of eyeballs and so much string. This is probably more than I will ever use in my lifetime, but I'm just going to fill these barrels at some point, fill these chests, just to make sure. I also made a specific sword for the occasion. It has Bane of Arthropods, so it kills them in one hit. And it has looting, and it is very effective. And because, well, you see, I think because this one has water pushing the spiders in, they don't entity cram. Or if they do, they entity cram at such high numbers, because once they start to, like get too many on one block it pushes them back into the water so you just end up with this terrifying spider tornado back there and it's a little intimidating when i initially came back and turned my screens back on it was running on about a frame a second which was quite funny to see and when they were all in like just three piles neatly with like the spiders swirling in the background and as soon as i hit them they just spread out into this mass of noise and legs it was very unpleasant this particular design is the shulker craft one yeah it's a little shulker craft one. I'll put a link in the description. It was a very easy to follow little build. So if you're new to building spawners and don't know where to start, this one's actually a really good one. Now that I have plenty of string spare, it is time to put a stop to these vines. Mm, probably there. It's a shame you can see it so much. You can probably get texture packs to get rid of that. We'll try that for now. See how that does. I like the texture it puts over leaves and how it spreads horizontally along things sometimes, but yeah, sometimes the, the great masses of dangling vines can be a bit much. There is so much grass. What are these endermen doing? That horse has actually got out. Come on. Beautiful, but come on in. You can't get through single gates, can you? That's the problem. Thank you. But anyway, no more shall we want for string. I was running low, I didn't want to waste what I had. There we are, done. Something I should have done much earlier, making a spider spawner. But this episode, I am going to make a start on these docks. I've got a design ready. This is just going to be like a small little loading area for this storage base, and we'll put a big proper harbour in on the other side. I was kind of planning on making them both quite big, but I think this one might suit staying as like this little, this little cove, whereas that one over there with a lot more space can be something much more grand. I'm now just trying to figure out if I need to get rid of this. I think I will actually because the boat design that I've got is going to be quite big. It's not massive but it's it's not like a dinky little boat, it's biggish. And whilst I might not do it this episode, I would like to kind of reinforce and tidy up the banks along the river where there are docks, as if they've not just, you know, structurally fortified the bits that they immediately need, they've also... what's the word I'm looking for? They've also fortified the banks on the other sides as well, so they don't have problems and so, you know, ships can manoeuvre without hitting all these bits of dirt underneath. So it's going to need a bit more clearing, which I might not do today. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. I feel like I've been taking on too much recently in an episode and getting myself overworked. What is... Oh, it's a llama! I thought something was on fire. Do you have Nautilus shells? No! Useless. Don't, yeah, you agree. I'm going to make a dock and I'm going to decorate the bottom and I'm going to put a ship in and we're going to get an idea of what else is going to be going on around here. I'm also hoping this episode to set up my little auto smelty farm thingy that I was talking about last episode. I just 
don't know where to put it. I want it back here somewhere because it's near the storage and I can just run in and out and get what I want. Do I want to put it off this side maybe? Because my storage is that one. So I kind of feel like this is the, the stone smelty side and that's the automatic farm side. So this, yeah, in here somewhere? I might actually make it here. Just through like a little, a little cut in through here. Yeah, some of my original strip mines back here. Anything else? Any little opened cavern bits? Yeah, this won't take much clearing out to put a little auto smelter in here. Yeah, no, that'll be fine. I'll pop it in here, decorate the cave again. And it should be far enough away that when it's running, I don't hear it when I'm in this main bit. Because I do find the noise of continual rails a little bit annoying. with a very poorly planned furnace room. I didn't make it big enough and I didn't want to start redecorating it so it's a little bit squashed. I'll probably come back and change this at some point. As and when I know how much I use it, I suppose. I want to know how much of this I actually end up consistently using. So one side's got the blast furnaces and this side has got the normal furnaces and the smokers. Now I have set it up with the rails so that it automatically filters in from the chests but obviously I can't use it on this side because these don't do the same things. Whilst I've left this for now, because I might swap these out to all being smokers or all being blast furnaces, I can't use this for now, but I've left it here because it's... Yeah, I set it up without really thinking. It was only afterwards I thought, oh, I can't actually use that. So for now, I shall just manually feed things in. It's not difficult to do. I can also just put it straight into the, um, the hoppers if I've got a lot of something. If I want to do an absolute ton of glass, I can put the sand directly into the hoppers. Not a huge problem. I could also just move it, put a block there and just uh, have this one as the last powered rail so that it just bounces backwards and forwards between these two. Anyway, I'll do it when the time comes. Chances are I'll end up changing this side. But yep, it's just, a, it's just another messy room at the back of this expanding cave network. There's a patch here. Might be able to make a doorway off here, but I don't like how narrow this footpath bit would be. So probably not. This room will probably just stand alone. Normally I build them into wall spaces so it's all kind of like covered over by stone and you really only see the fronts but I wanted it out this time and maybe I shouldn't have done that maybe I should have just put it into the wall and be done. This is a very functional thing it doesn't need to be pretty it's not meant to be on display I just wanted it to have a nice room rather than just be tucked away in a corner in a plain stone box like the cocoa bean farm. But that's that done so we can move on with the docks now. There's still so many dogs here with one cat lording it above them all. I'll never want for dogs, will I? You do. Anyway, yes, onto this bit. Need to do a little bit more clearing out. I want to sort out this bit. It's sticking out a little too much. It's going to interfere with my space to put a boat. I do have a boat planned and I don't want it to be scrunched right up against the land. I want it to be its own, its own thing. It's also quite different from anything that we've done so far. I mean, it's similar kind of woods and stuff, but uh, at the moment we've just done caves and blocky buildings, so it'll be nice to do something that's not a cave or a blocky building. So clear up this little bit, probably just round off this corner, take it to maybe about here, just cut that as a diagonal, and maybe tidy up some of the bank here. Some of this is a bit, um, bit close to the surface, so it might just need to chop it a little bit. What in God's name was that? Oh, it's the thingy spawning! No idea what that noise was. Oh, that made me jump. I've got to be careful because I've got so many farm animals around here. I don't want to accidentally shoot my own creatures. Are you going to come down at all? Or are you just going to keep doing that? Be careful creepers don't sneak up on me as well. Ooh, give me that membrane. I don't use it for anything, but I want it. Creeper, there we are. Rude. Now there's a bold bit.
yeah, I've widened the bottom of this river. I've still got some of the um, some of the water to sort out because it's still being a bit funky. But uh, yeah, I've done a little bit of decorating, put some detailing in the walls and in the floor. I haven't done too much because some of it is going to have the supports for the docks, so I don't want to start doing too much work. I need to cover it up with the the dock supports. But yeah, I've got a nice big space to work with here. I can maybe have two docks in here. This is very spacious. So now I need to actually build some ships, I suppose. Well, at least one ship today. Now the plan I had, the design I had, is actually pretty big. Looking at this, it fits this space quite nicely. It'll look really good in here, but it is actually just going to be too big for the river, I think. It won't make much sense. I would at some point like to widen the river. I said before about cleaning out some of these, um, some of these tall bits so that a, a boat could actually get through, but I think I would actually like to widen it as well, so that when you're in the area and you look around, it makes sense. Just maybe cut off some of these corners so this bit's nice and wide. Widen out this bit because it's very narrow. Reinforce the banks a little bit again so it looks like the villagers have done it intentionally. So now I've just got to decide, do I put the boat in exactly as I designed it or do I just make it a little bit shorter so that it makes more sense? And I think for now, I'm going to make it shorter. And if when I've got the river all widened out, because it's nice and wide all around here, it's just a few little bits on this side. I could very easily put the bigger design in the dock that's going to be down here. And it won't look out of place. Yeah, it'll look much better here, actually, I think. Yeah, okay, I'll just put it around here. Do a slightly smaller one. Similar design, just slightly smaller in this one. It looks so much better just for being deep. I'm thinking, put the boat in first. Get that in a position that looks comfortable and safe for uh, mooring a boat and then I can put the dock in around it to make it look comfortable in its fit. Because now in my look I'll build the dock, I'll start building the boat and the boat will be one block too far over and I don't want to move a whole boat. Or I will instead move some dock supports because that's going to be much easier. Yeah, fix the water, that's annoying, look at that. I've been reminded that you can do it with kelp so we'll see how this does. That's fine, you can still there. Okay, yeah, it got some of it. It's very hit and miss to figure out which block is causing the trouble half the time. See, that's not even getting that one. So that's probably not the reason that one's slipping. It's probably around here somewhere. That seems to have got it all.
We have a boat. We have one boat now ready in this harbour. And we've got plenty of space on this side to add another one. But I think I'd like to put that one as a different design from another kingdom at some point. We can start hinting at the world around us. While the boat design isn't based off anything in real life, it's meant to echo a little bit of the Viking theme that we're mildly carrying out here. So we've got a dragon head at the top here with a lantern in its mouth. And it's sort of, it's sort of just fairly simple like Viking longboats were. Got a flag at the end and it's got some sails. I appreciate to boat enthusiasts, sail designs like these are probably quite annoying because this probably isn't how it works. But I think in a, a storytelling sense, having sails that are all kind of held up with what are meant to be ropes makes more sense than just having them billowing out whilst you're in the harbour. I've decided that this particular boat is a trading vessel and they are trading with copper. But there's bits of copper everywhere and there's uh, copper in the chests. And we do have a below deck bit. It is very narrow and very cramped. There's some beds for where the sailors could sleep, and that's it. It's just full of boxes and chests and hay bales and some firewood. I don't really know what they'd use firewood for, but it's there. But there we are. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It was, I think it's about 14 blocks long, and the original design was, I think, nearer 20, so it would have come out to about here-ish, which I just, it feels too big. It feels like it would block that flow of the river, particularly once it's got the flag and everything hanging out, so... Yeah, this is a this is a, a medium-sized one, shall we say? And under the water, it's just very simple supports and a bit of bracing, and then all the greenery has completely swamped it. Very pretty. I like swimming around down here. If anybody has any suggestions for this, I would love to know. Some of the blocks are waterlogged, and it's fine. And some of them, like this strip under here, and it's the same on this side as well. I cannot get rid of this strip. I don't know if you can. It just won't stop. I've tried waterlogging it. I've tried growing the um growing the kelp up to waterlog it, I've tried filling it in with blocks and then emptying it again. It will not stop doing this. And I would like it to, if it's possible. So any suggestions on how to get that to stop doing that would be lovely. We've got some copper waiting on the docks to be uh, loaded into the ships. We've got a nice uh, a nice mule down here who's brought a great big wagon full of it. He's a very strong mule, don't question it. There's another pile here, and I've also added some piles in the storage room. We've got some raw here that hasn't been treated to go along with this pile here, and then there's a a little pile there, waiting to go out. When I finally get around to getting some parrots, I will of course be adding parrots to the ships, because you need to have parrots on the ships. I think they could also do with a cat as well. Because this is a smaller dock area, I have left the walls quite natural. Obviously some bits like around here have been refortified and made entirely out of brickwork now, but I've left quite a lot of it as quite rough and natural. I feel that as this is a smaller little dock rather than a harbour, it's not had this huge amount of work done to it. They've just gone with what works around here. When I come to do the big main harbour, which is going to be here, this will be all walled and built up properly. It won't just be straight into the dirt. It'll have proper reinforcements. I mean, it is a river. It probably doesn't need tide walls, but uh, I might still do some of that stuff anyway, just for the look. I have one last little job to finish off, which is that I want to put something in these little vendor stalls. I think one is probably going to have food for people who are working the docks, so maybe this one. And one of them I'd quite like to have something... I'm thinking flowers for now, partly because it's pretty, and partly an idea that um, people would maybe buy exotic plants or flowers, or they'd trade them here, and that they would get taken home. So whatever ship comes in here at some point will uh, possibly leave with some souvenirs. This one, I think, should be food. And I think the other one, this little one down here, should be the flower vendor. I think food would take priority and get the best spot, as it should. And we want some hearty snacks. So, pumpkin pie. Cookies, of course. We want cake on top. Yep. Just some meat, I suppose. Meat. We can pretend it's a garnish. Some flowers are edible. I don't know if that one is, but I hope so. And over here. That one. Probably just do that one. Lily of the Valley. I need to get more of those. I think that's my last one. But some of these. I don't want to go too heavy on these. I have a tendency to do that. I like these. Here we are. A little flower store. As and when I get this entire village uh, mob-proofed, as I do plan to do at some point, <laughs> way off in the future, I will of course have the villagers free roaming around here, so there'll be people actually working the docks. But I will probably fence traders in build them like a little fenced area around each booth so they can move around and look like they're working but they, they're essentially just always manned at their stations so that there's always little villagers working the, working the stalls. 
If you have any ideas in mind for a stall, please do let me know, because I tend to be pretty pretty straightforward, so I'll go for things like flower trader and food and maybe cloth. But if you can think of something that's really quite interesting, then do let me know. After building this, and I said that I was going to potentially build another one over here, I had a couple of people suggest that it be a villager trading hall, like a community centre, and that's probably what it's going to be, so we'll have some more little vendor stalls here. So any suggestions, and we'll see what we can do. We are now coming up towards the end of this episode, but before we go, I'm going to make a little book, which is going to have all of our plans. And as we come up with new plans, we shall add it to the book. So we can refer back to it and we can cross stuff off and see what we've done, what we still want to do, any new suggestions that we like the idea of. It can go in the book. Because I am getting very distracted and forgetful. There's still so much to do. And I need some kind of record. And it would be nice to have a record that's in-game and in-video so that you can see it as well. We'll start off with the big things. The forge. That's a big one. The harbour over on the other side. If we're staying in this world, I could probably do to set up a nether hub on the roof. That says nether, not the land. Villagers, trading hall, as in the little community area we spoke of a minute ago. The mines, and the river clearance. But now, that'll do for big tasks. I'm going to leave us page, and then we'll go to mid-sized tasks. I cannot type today. There is one more big task. Which for now I'm just going to call the library. We shall come back to that as and when I know what I'm doing with it, but I've got an idea for something. Okay, for now that will do. Got some big tasks, such as the forge and finishing off the big harbour over there. Would like to get on the nether roof at some point. Never actually done that properly. I've done it as like a, a practice thing in older world, but I've never actually done it and had it working. Got some mid-sized tasks, which are mostly just building. And the smaller tasks, such as more stalls and organising the farms. I would like to get some windmills in at some point. I want to get the cats, I want to get some parrots, and just to stock up on stuff. So for now, that's a good little starting point to just keep an eye on things, and I can add to or take away from the list whenever I like. And it can go somewhere safe. I do have a spare item frame, so I might just pop it. Can I not, can I not just, there we go, thank you. There we are, there's the book of things to do. But I will call it here for today. I'm really happy with how this book came out. I don't know where I was going with that but I'm happy with it. Quite cute. I also quite enjoy this ticky floor whenever I step on the uh, pressure plates. I'm not quite sure what my plans are for next week. Part of me wants to go get the things from the end, so I'll go get more shulkers and more elytras, but part of me also wants to start on the, uh, like the mining stuff, putting in some railroads and putting in some platforms and that in the mines, and part of me kind of wants to do the farms. I don't really know. Since I'm in the mood, I might go get the, the shulkers and then see what I feel like afterwards. That's probably the most sensible way of doing it. But once again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. So, bye!